Welcome to Demagogue News Tonight. I'm Jim Clydesdale. Today we'll be discussing our country's policies toward spreading its technology, government, and civilized culture with a few with the wild natives of a few foreign lands. First we go to the little tropical island of Hawaii, which has an oppressive monarchy. For years, American sugar planters have been growing sugarcane for the for the world. Here's Carl. I'm here with a native Hawaiian named Tulu. So, Tulu, how are you? I'm good. What do you do for a living on Hawaii? My husband does some hunting in the forest, and I do the cooking at the house and the house here. I heard you had some issue with your money. Tell me, how do you feed your children? Well, I feed my children with coconuts. If we run out of food, we go hunting in the forest. Why would you run out of coconuts? Uh, it's because the uh, ocean keeps them from herself for it all of it for herself. So. Don't you guys have some water? <laughs> yes, we use the stream next to our house and we drink and clean from it. I heard you guys don't have a plumbing system. You do your business near the stream, right? Yes, it's quite natural. I see. And what type of shelter and clothing do you use? I live in houses made of tree bark, sticks, bamboo, grass heads, and some rocks. I wear a hula skirt like the rest of my family. How do you feel when the queen takes them that are not yours? Um, not good, not good. Now, if you had to describe your queen as a one word answer, what would you describe her as? A, mean, B, dim-witted, C, selfish, D, mean, I mean, Weird. <laughs> what does dim way it mean? It means your queen is very special. Yes, she's very dim with it. I think everyone in my country will think she is dim with it. Do you feel happy that the American Marines went in and asked if the queen can leave? Well, yes, because now I have more food for my children and we don't have to to dance to, to her anymore. Okay, one last question. Isn't it true that your shamans are in the influence of drugs? Well, yeah, but... Thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you for your time. Back to you, Jim. <laughs> Sounds like they are coconuts. Now we go further east to the oriental nation of Japan where Commodore Perry is trying to get the country to open up to foreign trade. Here's Bob. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. I'm here today on the main island of Japan, Honshu. With me is your average run-of-the-mill Japanese native, Fuji Ono. Fuji, how are you today? I'm fine. Good, good. Now, Fuji, I'm not accusing you of anything, but the American people are just itching to know. Do you hate white people? No, but we... But, but what? I have been told by very reliable sources that from childhood, the Japanese are taught that Westerners are stupid, smelly degenerates. Now, how do you feel about the people who run your country in this medieval way? Why would they have closed such a marvelous place for over 200 years? They're doing quite well in my opinion. Really now? Fuji, have you ever looked out to sea and wonder, dreamed and wondered of what it would be like to see places beyond your isolated little Japan? Well, yes. Are you not aware that your country is under the control of a military dictator? Uh, yes, but they keep order. With an iron fist, that must really crush your spirits and hinder your creative instincts. I never thought of it that way. Of course you didn't. Do you feel that maybe with their swords and their crossbows that your Japan feels inadequate military-wise when they compare themselves to the greater powers of the Western world? And this is the reason they do not l allow you to leave your own country? In a way, I suppose. Now, Fuji, do you feel it is unfair that your country is not allowing you to expand your horizons and opportunities? 
Not really. They have their reasons. Is there reason that they despise the Western world and therefore refuse to open their harbors to the newfound wealth that is America? Last question, Fuji. Are you eager to learn about American customs through trade? Yes. Well, there you have it. The natives know what they want and are dying for outside contact. Back to you, Jim. Sounds like they're Honda something. Now moving further south, we go to the Central American region of Panama, where they are trying to gain their independence. Here's Priya. Welcome to Panama in Central America. The Panamanians were trying to break away from the Colombians. Do you like freedom? Yeah, that sounds nice. Your country is controlled by Colombia. Have you ever met any Colombians? Well, no. I'll say, she has never met the brutes who control our, pe our people by force. What would you think about helping shut and trade routes between Europe and Asia? Helping others? That sounds nice. Great. So we'll dig a canal through your country and you, c you can have your independence. Right? Yeah. Whatever you say. That's right. Back to you, Jim. Sounds like they really dig the idea of independence. Now we go to another set of islands that's being controlled by the cruel, heartless, domineering Spanish. Here's Gertrude. Thanks, Jim. It's the wondrous year of 1848, and I'm here in the Philippines, a large archipelago in Southeast Asia. This is Amihan, your average Filipino villager, and I'm going to be asking her a few questions about the idea of America annexing the Philippines. Hello, Amihan. Hi. Now tell me, when was it that the Spanish explorers arrived and squashed the meager Filipino government? Was it around 1521? Yeah, that was the day. Ever since the Spanish blew up America's most prized battleship, the Maine, many Americans have felt deep anger and even hatred toward the Spanish. Do you, Amihan, feel similar fury towards them? Absolutely. Tell me about your living conditions. Are most Filipinos clean, healthy, and educated? Do most have plenty to eat? Well, our education isn't like yours in the West. And my husband goes out hunting for food. <laughs> that doesn't sound very healthy. Aren't your children malnourished? <laughs> no, Do they're they pretty sick? good. How do you feel about the idea of America taking the Philippines under their warm wing of freedom and opportunity? The living conditions would change for the better, and your children would get properly educated. I guess that doesn't sound too bad. Thanks for your time, Mommy Hunt. Now, America, you can see that Filipinos are practically begging for our help in overthrowing their cruel Spanish oppressors. Why let these people down? If helping the Filipinos is not incentive enough to overthrow Spain, think of the Philippines as a trading post. One so close to China would be incredibly beneficial to the American consumer. Back to you, Jim. There you have it. Five good examples why America is freeing and in the process civilizing the wild natives. I'm Jim Clydesdale, and you heard it here at Demagogue News. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto.